Watershed. My name is Kelly McKinnon and I've been hanging out with the Watershed community consistently for the past year or so. If you're thinking the name sounds familiar, it's because my husband Ray brought the message for the gathering last week and has been sharing periodically with the Watershed community probably for the past uh, two or a year and a half or so. When Matt asked me to share a few weeks ago, I was really excited at first, uh, but then I started to think about, about it and I wasn't really sure what I could share. Most of you, if you've been a part of the Watershed community, have been on this journey collectively and individually of unlearning what you knew about race and blackness and whiteness already. So I didn't want to give you something that you could find online or in a book. So what I'm sharing with you is a little more personal. I feel like it's the genetic code to my resilience, and it feels a little bit like I'm letting you into my fortress of solitude today. All of Hebrews chapter 11 and the first part of chapter 12 is commonly referred to as the faith chapter or the hall of fame or the hall of faith because it tells stories of people in the Old Testament who lived by faith through challenging circumstances. Then in closing out this list of biblical heroes, we're reminded that we have a great cloud of witnesses who have faced trials of their own and are cheering us on in our own journey. So I think for me, knowing this verse and being able to connect it to my own family is really sustaining for me and it holds one of the keys of living as a black woman in America. The last section in that passage talks about a great cloud of witnesses. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my great cloud of witnesses. My great cloud includes my great grandmother, Lydia, who raised a daughter and five sons. I like to imagine her as the OG boy mom. Lydia and her husband, George, have descendants all over the country that include doctors, teachers, lawyers, more than a few pastors, engineers, and artists. I'd like to think that the occasional flashes of brilliance that I have, um, being a mom to four boys, came directly from her. Maybe the brilliance comes from my great-grandma Pauline. My mom says she was creative and industrious. She could sew a quilt and build the bed to put it on. She raised 10 children and was the queen of taking what she had and turning it into what she needed. I have a sneaking suspicion that this quality has to be embedded in our DNA because her granddaughter, my mom, is the same way. Maybe. Um, some of this came from my grandma, Maggie Francis, who we lovingly call Frank. Um, she surely passed on some of her grit and resilience. She was a wife and a mother as a teen. She lost a child and later on her husband. And a lot of people would find that enough reason to not show up for themselves every day, but not Frank. She later went back to school and pursued her dream of becoming a writer. And she self-published a book of short stories. I think this great cloud of witnesses can also be seen in the way my ancestors would gather on Sundays. Aunts, uncles, cousins, kids all together after the Sunday service. My aunt recently told us about memories she had of going to my great grandparents house, Lonnie and Sarah. We still kept that tradition up as a kid. I remember driving to my grandparents house after um, church on Sundays. I always thought it was fun to hang out with my cousins and see what surprises my grandma and grandpa might have had in store, but now I know how important it is to have a safe place to recharge and refresh before a new week begins. Those gatherings were kind of like, and still are, a port, um, a safe harbor from the storms of life. We still have them. They look a little differently now, mostly on Zoom, um, but you might have seen them before the pandemic called the cookout. Same principle, whether it's Sunday dinner, the 4th of July cookout or birthday celebration, we find joy in each other. We make our own party. We understand the anger and the hurt that it that we work to shield ourselves and our families from every day. But when we get together, we get to put that aside. We laugh, we cry, we laugh until we cry. There will definitely be food, good stories, and more than likely someone will break out into song. My great aunt Mary was the ultimate storyteller. She could recall 30 minute long stories she learned as a child well into her 90s. I think the last recording we have of her is when she was 97, telling this 30 minute long story um, about the barn raising. Both my grandpas could also spin a pretty good tale too, although they might tell you it was a true story. 
The sense of family and community never stopped though with our biological family. My great cloud also gave me the gift of hospitality. For example, my Aunt Leanne, who never had biological children of her own, she was just like a grandma to us and hosted the best sleepovers. She taught me how to make a pound cake and who to root for when watching wrestling on Saturday mornings. My grandma Ruth and grandpa Charlie were always ready to open their home and share with whoever needed them. Extended family, classmates of their kids and grandkids, neighbors. They treated everyone like family, even when others didn't offer them the same respect. So from the door of no return, to the Middle Passage, to the very first woman to be brought here, Angela X, all the way down to my direct ancestors, Lydia and George, Lonnie and Sarah, Colleen and Clarence, Robert and Maggie, Charlie and Ruth, Michael and Cynthia, a whole host of aunts and uncles and cousins, these are my great cloud. Thanks y'all, see you later. <laughs>